So a few days ago on one of the 32 Thoughts written articles, you had yourselves Elliot Friedman use up the final thought in the article to talk about the Montreal Canadiens. Now, we'll leave a link in the description to the article if you want to go ahead and read it. It's 32 Thoughts. Everybody knows what this is about. But the one particular thought that we care about for this video was posted onto Twitter. It was posted onto Reddit. Everybody was talking about this. Take a look at Elliot Friedman's 30-second thought from two days ago. We've done enough Arizona, so let's skip to Montreal. No one's demanding playoffs, but it's time to get to the meaningful games late into the season stage. Two massive wins for this team were Yaroslavkovsky and Samuel Montembeau. I would expect the Canadians to try and extend both Slavkovsky and Caden Gooley. In a small sample size, Lane Hudson showed why everyone's so excited. The Canadians have a lot of young defensemen, so they'll see what's out there, and I think they'll also weigh a big swing up front. So... This is a simple thing. It's just like five sentences, but there's a lot of information here and a lot of ideas as to what the Canadians could do. Starting out with the last point here, Friedman says he thinks the Canadians could weigh a big swing up front. Whatever that means, I'm kind of interpreting it as him saying the Canadians might make a trade for another forward. If I'm not interpreting that correctly, then hey, somebody please let me know in the comments what does he mean by that. But... Talking about the wins, talking about the other guys that showed off very well, there are a lot of young defensemen, yada yada yada, it's all true, but I wanted to talk about the Canadians trying to extend Slavkovsky and Gouli. Now, as we have said, this entire thing is not new news. Like, oh, spoiler alert, the Canadians are trying to extend Slavkovsky and Gouli. Wow, that's so amazing. Shocker, I didn't realize that. All sarcasm aside, everybody knew that Uri Slavkovsky and Caden Gouli would both be guys the Montreal Canadiens would be interested in extending. It's just kind of reaffirming to have Elliot Friedman, of all people, write about that in an article. Both of these players, Slavkovsky and Gouli, have their entry-level contracts expiring at the end of next season, 2024-2025. So, when it comes to that, the period for these guys to sign extensions opens up on July 1st. And with this in mind, I wanted to ask the question to y'all in the comments section, where do the Habs go with this? Because there are a number of things you need to think about, I'd say, when it comes to players who are this young and who are this good. Pretty much, it's the balance between giving these guys the money that they deserve and giving them money that would benefit the Montreal Canadiens. Both of these guys, Slavkovsky and Gouli, you could say, are probably going to be Habs for the long term. If everything works well with their careers, everything goes right, then they'll probably retire with the Montreal Canadiens sometime in... 2037, like, if we're being very generous, of course, sometimes players retire earlier, sometimes players leave teams, it's whatever, but if these guys exhibit best-case scenario, they're probably Canadians players for a long time. So it depends on how you value what these guys are going to be in the future versus what they are now. And honestly, it's kind of difficult to do that at this stage, because right now, both of these guys, Slavkovsky and Gouli, have been pretty good. Yuri Slavkovsky, as we had noted, he finished off the season with 50 points in 82 games played with an absolutely stellar point production rate to end off the season in the second half. He was absolutely on fire. He was like a point per game guy, pretty much. And if he's able to do all of this now at 20 years old, imagine what the price could be if he is a 23, 25, 27 year old Getting this amount of points, maybe even getting more points, he becomes like an 80, 90 point guy. He becomes the next Miko Rantanen, like everybody's tossing that name out there. If you believe that's a realistic outcome, then anything under seven, eight million dollars a year on a long term contract extension would be seen as somewhat of a steal. But of course, fans can look at Yuri Sovkovsky and say, oh yeah, look at that, he's that good. But Yuri Sovkovsky can also look at himself and say that too. It's very easy for a player and the agent to analyze the numbers and look at all the stuff in the same way that Canadians fans do. Hey, Slavkovsky was so good, and he's only going to get better, he's so young, so maybe it would be in their best interest to wait and not sign a contract extension as soon as possible. Try to maximize the amount of dollars that they can get, because if Slavkovsky signs his contract extension on July 1st, let's say it's... Let's just be a little bit conservative, maybe $7 million over eight years. If Slavkovsky then goes out there and has a 70-point season at 21 years old, then all of a sudden that $7 million AAV contract looks like a steal. 
it looks so good for a guy who's so young and who is continuously getting better. So it would be in his best interest to say, okay, we'll not sign it right away. We'll play out 24-25. I'll get 70, 80 points. And then we'll renegotiate next season where I have more bargaining power and more of a justifiable reason to get more money than everybody else on this team. Sorry, Suzuki. Sorry, Caulfield. But if one day Yaris Lovkovsky is the number one point guy on the team, it wouldn't really be the most surprising thing in the world, right? He's been that good that whatever sort of ceiling or production rate seems like a possibility at this point. And the funny part is, when it comes to Caden Gooley, you could say the same thing about him. Not because Caden Gooley was a point-per-game guy, or he did this, or he did that. I mean, he was a point-per-game towards the end of the season there. Six points in his last five games, but Caden Gooley finished off the season with 22 points in 70 games played, and he was more or less the number one defender for the Canadians for a good chunk of these games. I mean, he played 20-plus minutes a night, he was a consistent battler out there, he could block shots, he could hit, he could score points too. The three-point game against Seattle was pretty much what kick-started the run of points for Gooley towards the end of the season here. This is a guy who, if you want to say, has a similar situation and set of circumstances as Yaroslav Kovsky, I feel like that's totally valid. If the Canadians signed Gooley to a contract extension on July 1st, then he has himself, let's say, a 30-40 point season. He still plays 22 minutes a night. He gets better. He's more physical. He blocks more shots. He gets more hits. He produces more points. Then he's like, yeah, I can get more money than all the other defensemen on this team, too. I have the opportunity to do that. So, for the Montreal Canadiens, Elliot Friedman going out there and saying that these guys would both be intended targets of an extension, implying that they'd try to do this now and not put it off till next year, it would be very smart for Montreal to try to lock these guys down to whatever contract it is they'll be willing to accept at the max length they'd be willing to accept too. If Slavkovsky and Gooley are willing to go eight years, then I think most Canadiens fans have seen enough out of these young guys where it's like, yeah, give them whatever dollar amount they're asking for right now, because by the time 2026 rolls around, their contracts, if they're long-term, might actually be steals. As for what they're worth right now, honestly, it's difficult to say, because Slavkovsky produced in the second half of the season almost like a six, six and a half, maybe seven million dollar caliber player if you really wanted to stretch it. Of course, it's kind of ludicrous to think about that right now, but Six million seems to be the floor here for a guy that provided the amount of stability, production, skill, and goal scoring like Slavkovsky did after he had started out the year pretty poorly. For Caden Gooley, well, how much does a 20-point defenseman, or let's not even say 20-point defenseman, let's say 30-point defenseman, just because he did pick up his scoring towards the end of the year, let's say a 30-point defenseman who plays all the big minutes, gets a ton of shot blocks, gets a ton of hits, he's very stable, and he makes good breakout passes, especially if he's young. How much is that worth? Is that a $4 million guy? Is that a $4.5 million guy? I mean, you talk about some of the other players on the Montreal Canadiens, and David Savard, for example. He exhibits similar traits. He's a shot-blocking kind of guy, a little bit more defensively sound, and he had a similar amount of points, but David Savard is making $3.5 million a season. But you have to remember that David Savard is 11 years older, so there is a little bit of a difference there. Also included is Mike Matheson, who is making 4.875 million. But of course, Mike Matheson is a lot more offensively capable, and you can debate his defensive qualities to his game. But for Caden Gooley, again, he's way younger, so where exactly do you go with this contract negotiation? On the Twitters and on the subreddit, there are people tossing around hypothetical numbers. Oh, could it be 3 million, 6 million, whatever, whatever, like... There are some concerns as to whether or not Caden Gooley would really be worth the money because his injury proneness and incompetence on special teams would make him less valuable. But then again, you have to think about the exact same thing we had just talked about. Caden Gooley is 22 years old, so he's gonna get better, but just by how much? If he's not that great on the power play right now, if he's injury prone right now, What's to say that he's not going to go out there and be able to improve upon that and eventually be a full 82-game per-season guy? What is that worth on the market? How much would you pay for that? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as to what Slavkovsky and Caden Gooley could be getting on their contract extensions from the Canadians. Let me know your thoughts as to what that would cost right now and what that could potentially cost in a year from now, after these guys play another season and after they, presumably, progress forward and get better. 
Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as to how much these guys should be getting on their next deals. I hope you enjoyed this video. Ash Rolls 99. And bye.